Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, and John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Somebody sent me something about uh, Daniel 7, and I thought, you know, eh, there's some things look all right, but then other parts, I don't think so. So I'm going to try to do a little partial commentary on Daniel chapter 7. And uh, you should know, I consider Daniel the most difficult book in the Bible, my opinion. I have more problems with that than probably anything. Uh, some of it, I don't know. Daniel said the, the books would be sealed until the time of the end. Oh, where's that? Well, that's in Daniel 12 and verse 4. The angel said, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, my opinion is, uh, for the most part, ungodly knowledge is going to be increased. Uh, take a look at the last, oh, I don't know, 200 years. I mean, it's just amazing the amount of explosion of ungodly knowledge. But godly knowledge, knowledge of the Bible is actually decreased. So let's take a look at Daniel 7. And we're going to take a look at the lion beast thing. It's the vision of the war beasts. I'm only going to, I'm only concerned about the um, the lion and I'm not going to really give you an interpretation I'm going to let you do that on your own because be honest with you I'm not sure but I'm going to uh, take some verses and knit them together all right Daniel 7 verse 1 in the first year of Belshazzar king of Babylon now remember Belshazzar was uh, Nebuchadnezzar's son on uh, the first year, Belshazzar, king of Daniel, uh, Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Now, you got to realize, Daniel is probably, Daniel's got to be in his, at least in his 70s, if not in his 80s. He's old. I mean, he was probably a youth when he went into Babylon, and they were there for 70 years. So he's probably in his mid-80s or somewhere around the 80s. So Daniel, Daniel's up there. Verse 2, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. Keep that in mind, the sea. The four great beasts come up from the sea, diverse, one from another. Now, contrast this with Revelation 13 and verse 1. John said, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. All righty. So that ties right in with Daniel 7. All right, so let's read Revelation 13 one again. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. A lion. The mouth as a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. All right, before we go to Daniel, let's go to uh, Revelation 17 and verse 1. 
Daniel ties into Revelation so much. It's unbelievable. Revelation 17, 1. And there came out of the seven angels, which have the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. You know, there's a, you know, when you, when a guy, uh, you know, when you when a guy gets a bride, what does he want? A whore or a, or do you want a virgin? Well, I'll tell you what, the Lord wants a virgin bride. But here we got a whore. Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, which sitteth upon many waters. Ah, how do you sit upon many waters? It's a figure of speech. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scholar, scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And 95 out of 100 churches will tell you, oh, that's, that's Rome. Well, you know, people, uh, Babylon existed before Rome. And I'm sorry, Rome was never the bride of Christ. It's talking about another place. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Uh, I'll give you a little hint here. Find out who killed Jesus and who killed the early apostles and you'll know who the mystery Babylon is. And just remember, Pilate tried to release Jesus. Now, it was the other group that killed Jesus. And uh, people like uh, Paul killed Stephen. Verse 7, And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. The word perdition means to fall. Uh, who fell from heaven? Yeah. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Do you know that there are people whose names were not written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world? Uh, how about Judas Iscariot? That would be my, if, if I had to make a, a guess, you know, that would be my, that would be my choice. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here's the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And everybody knows Rome is, sits on seven mountains. Well, guess what? So does Jerusalem. So is Jerusalem a virgin bride or is she a whore? Kabbalah, anybody? Verse 10. And there are seven kings, five are fallen and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth 
and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings, one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb. Uh, the space force, right? And the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Wow, those that are in Christ are the called, chosen, and faithful. Boy, somebody somebody, uh, tell your uh, whosoever will churches, will you? Uh, now, who is this beast, you know, the, the sea? What is the sea that rises up, uh, the beast rises up out of? Well, verse 15, Revelation 17 and verse 15. He's going to explain to you the sea and the waters where the whore sits. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, languages. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are people and multitudes and nations and and tongues. The King James Bible explains the King James Bible. That's why I always suggest that uh, you use the King James Bible. All the other versions, they change words. You don't make the word association. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and to give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. All right, let's go back to Daniel 7, verse 1. May as well start at the beginning. In the first year of Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night. Behold, the four winds of the heavens strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea. Well, what's the sea? The water, right? Languages, nations, peoples, and uh, yeah. Uh, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. We're going to do some serious study on a lion. And we're going to also mention eagle's wings. So keep that in mind. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. So you got a lion with eagle's wings. And behold, another beast, a second like to it, a bear, and it raised up itself on one side, on one side, a bear. Hmm. You know what the symbol of Russia is? The bear. Russia, communism, right? It was one of the first nations to go complete communist. I think it was the, the first major nation that went complete communism. And they murdered millions of Christians. Millions. And that bear it raised itself up on one side. What side? The left? Yeah, I bet you it was the left side. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, 
Arise, devour much flesh. Well, if this bear is Russia, it, that would make sense. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. And I'm not saying the bear is Russia. I'm not saying that. But it, to me, it kind of, you know, I don't know. Verse 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. You know what, people? The first mention of iron in the Bible has to do with the children of Cain. You know, the first murderer? Uh, I think it was Tubal Cain. Yeah. He was an instructor in iron. And if you want proof of that, you can go to uh, Genesis chapter 4, uh, the lineage of Cain. Uh, let's see, verse 22, Genesis 4, 22. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain. Uh, those of you that uh, may not know it, but uh, Tubal Cain is a word that figures prominently in Freemasonry. And no, I'm not a Freemason. I've been accused of being a Freemason, but I'm not. But I've read books by some people that came out of Freemasonry. And uh, I try to learn as much as I can about it. Matter of fact, I bought a book of Freemasonry at a used bookstore and uh, read some parts of it. But, you know, I don't want to be an expert on Freemasonry. I just know it's not good. All right. So, and Zilla, she also bare Tubal Cain. An instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. An artificer. That's somebody that takes iron and brass. And I mean, that's not just a mere blacksmith. That's somebody that's skilled. Art. Artificer. I mean, somebody that's skilled in carvings and, and what have you. So, and an instructor. Not even, you know, not just even a blacksmith, but an instructor. So, you know, somebody very, very skilled. Well, that's Cain. Cain's children. Tubal Cain. Uh, let's see. Daniel 7, 7. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. Goes back to Cain, right? And it devoured and break in pieces break in pieces and stamp the residue with the feet of it and it was diverse it was different and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had ten horns what about the beast of revelation didn't that have ten horns ten heads yeah verse 8 and I considered the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in his horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think we ought to stop right there. All right, so let's take a look. You know, the lion, right? What about the lion? Uh, we looked at the bear. Let's take a look at the lion real quick. Let's go back and take a look at the... Daniel 7, verse 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man... And a man's heart was given to it. Okay, let's go back and look at lion. Where's the first place in the Bible 
where it talks about a lion. Well, you know, this is, uh, what do they call this? They call this the um, law. Well, it's not really a law, but they, they call it the um, law of first mention. Usually the first time a word or phrase appears in the Bible, the King James anyways, it will give you an idea of what it means or what in reference to. Which is why I tell you, use the King James Bible. All the other Bibles are satanic. Genesis chapter 49. I think uh, Jacob Israel is talking about his sons, about their different characteristics. You know, if you've never read Genesis, uh, or Genesis is a very, very important book, people. I mean, that's why we're so messed up today. Uh, churches refuse to encourage their people to read. Well, churches. Uh, the church is the people. I should say these wolf, wolves, pastors. They don't, uh, they want to hide things from you. I don't hide things from you. Well, there is, there's a couple things I, I don't really talk about because most people can't chew meat. That's a shame, too. There's some really deep stuff I could teach people, but most people, I don't know, I've lost listeners. And, I, you know, well, they're not my listeners. I'm just, um, I'm just a, somebody that tries to feed the sheep. You know, they're not my listeners, but people have gotten, they can't figure, you know, if you can't handle the baby stuff, how are you going to handle the heavy stuff? If you, if you, it's, uh, it disgusts me. It really does, you know. But I try to warn people. And some of the things that I could teach are, it's, they're not, they're not important to salvation. You know, not taking the mark of the beast, not worshiping the beast. Those are important things. But, uh, all right, Genesis 49 and verse 9. We're talking about the lion, right? Judah is a lion's whelp. Ah, Judah. Uh, who was Judah? Well, Judah was the king tribe. Judah was where King David came from. The line of Judah is where Christ came in his human form. Ah. Judah was the king tribe. Haven't you ever heard Christ was called the lion of the tribe of Judah? I hope you've heard that. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? You don't want to rouse up a lion. That's not a very smart thing to do. Now, um, what's interesting, I'm looking at the Blue Letter Bible, which I don't particularly like, but uh, lion appears in the King James, 81 times. In the New Living Translation, 64 times. You see, they changed the words. In the NIV, 77 times. Huh. In the NASB, 76 times. Uh, you know, it's... What happens to the other, uh, you know... If one of the times when you need to do word association, it's not there, you totally miss the sense of the word. Now, in Revelation 5.5, 5, 
uh, they were going to open the, the scrolls, but there was nobody found on earth that was found worthy to open the scrolls. And then Revelation 5, 5, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. See, he's weeping because nobody was found worthy to open the scrolls. He said, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And it's talking about Christ. So, all right. So, the lion... There's going to be a beast like a lion, but the first instance in the Bible is when it's talking about Judah. Now, Judah, guess who Judah married? Oh, boy. Here's the bad news. Now, in Genesis 38, verse 1, and it came to pass at the time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain Adulamite, whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, a Canaanite. God said, don't marry the Canaanites. Ladies, you know, guys, uh, probably as well as anybody. If they see a good looking girl, oh boy, there you go. You know, they say, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, a lot of guys do that. And uh, a lot of guys marry females for their looks, and a lot of women marry guys for their money. Not exactly a match made in heaven. No, uh, it's the other place, if you ask me. And uh, so... I hope you know that the Bible didn't speak kindly of the Canaanites. I mean, there, that's a whole study in and, in and of itself. And I get people all the time come to the channel and say, eh, you just don't understand Chaplain Bob. Yeah, I understand perfectly well. There's two seed lines on this earth. There's the good seed and there's the not so good seed. And God did not want his people marrying the Canaanites. And if you're interested, I got an entire playlist on the angels that sinned and the Canaanites. And God said to kill them all. Didn't say go there and preach to them and send evangelists and tell them about the love of Jesus. No, he said, go and kill them all. You know, and it just, uh, I kill, it just kills me. The level of ignorance. Well, I don't think they're ignorant. I, I think most of the people that disagree with this are probably deceivers. Because they're not willing to do the studying. I don't know, maybe God blinds them. I'm not saying everybody that disagrees with this is uh, a deceiver, but they're just not using their skulls. You know, and I'm not a Bible scholar by any stretch of the imagination. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. And she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name Er, E-R. That's funny. That's the first two letters of the word error. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she called his name Onan. And she again conceived and bare a son and called his name Shelah. And he was at Cherib when she bare him. And Judah took a wife for Er his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. And Er, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Wow. You know, there's people that actually tell you that God is unjust. Yeah, there are people who say that. See, he was a Canaanite. The kid was a Canaanite. Well, he was half Judah and half Canaanite. Uh, 
you know, it's like if you take a glass of, take a glass, a clean glass, fill it up with halfway full with, uh, let's say, spring water, purified spring water, sterilized purified spring water. And then uh, go to the toilet after somebody's uh, used it a couple times, several times. Take half a glass of that. Pour it into that glass. What did you just do? You, uh, yeah. Well, that's basically what uh, Judah's kids were. So, and heir, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Uh, why didn't the Lord say, oh, Judah, your kid's evil. You need to tell him the good way. Tell him about my commandments. Tell him about the love of Jesus. I want to see him saved. He's your son. I care about him. I love everybody. Uh, no. No. And the Lord slew him. People can't wrap their heads around this stuff. And Judah said unto Onan, okay, second kid, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed would should not be his, and it came to pass that when he went in unto his brother's wife, that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. Uh, this was a Levitical thing that um, if... Uh, if a woman died, I mean, I'm sorry, if a, if a brother married a woman and he died before there were see, children, uh, especially a son, that the brother would marry and raise up sons for his brother. So he didn't like the idea, and he, I guess he spilled it on the ground. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord Wherefore, he slew him also. Oh, yeah. God, uh, here it is uh, two times in a row. Then said Judah to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, Remain a widow at thy father's house till Shelah, my son, be grown. For he said, Lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Um, uh, so, uh, eventually Tamar, who was a pure-blooded Israelite, I'm not sure if she was of Judah or not, I believe she was, uh, she put on some horse clothing, uh, she must have covered her face, and, uh, knew that, uh, Judah was going somewhere, and she hid along the way, pretended to be a whore, and, um, uh, got Judah to um, get her pregnant. And guess what? That's where the line of Christ came from. Believe it or not. Oh, yeah. So, um, that was how Judah's pure bloodline was kept. Chaplain, Bob, that sounds racist. Well, I can't help it. It's God's word. You know? It's God's word. Read Genesis 38. You know, I don't have time to read the whole thing, but that's the that's the thing, right? So Judah had uh, three children by the Canaanite woman. The third one survived. And then he had a child by Tamar. And that was the line where Christ had come through. I believe Tamar had, I think she had twins. Let me check real quick. Yep, she had twins. Uh, Genesis 38, 27. And it came to pass in the time of her travail that behold, twins were in her womb. Uh, let's see. And it came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread saying, this one came out first. All right, so because there was a thing about the firstborn being uh, getting a double portion. 
the birthright. And it came to pass, as he drew back his hand, that, behold, his brother came out, and she said, How hast thou broken forth? This breach be upon thee. Therefore his name was called Pharez. And afterward came out his brother, that had the scarlet thread upon his hand, and his name was called Zerah. So Judah had one Canaanite kid and two pure bred uh, Israelite kids. All right, so you got the true lion of Judah, those that are of uh, Tamar, and then you got the those that spake as a lion of the bad seed, the Canaanites. And you know, the Canaanites, where, where do you think they are today? What do you think they call themselves? You think they call themselves Canaanites? No. They say, we're of Judah. Oh, yeah. We're of Judah. And they are. They're of Judah. But they're in that, that part of that glass that's filled with uh, toilet water. And there are actually churches that will teach you that, oh, well, you know, they can be saved. They can be saved. I suggest you read Genesis 6. Or do that Genesis 6 study. And uh, you'll find out that... Uh, there's satanic fallen angel human hybrids. I mean, there's a reason why in Genesis 6, the giants were born. I mean, I'm sorry. Unbelieving women don't marry believing men and then have giants for kids. And then after the flood, they have giants for kids with six fingers and six toes. And then God says, go into the land and kill them all. Yeah. And then uh, when Jesus is born, well, you know, now God changed his mind and he loves everybody and he wants all everybody to be saved. Uh, that's why we are in the mess we are in the West today. We will not identify who the bad seed is. So, whatever. All right. Let's see, where am I going to go? So you got the uh, tribe of Judah is the lion. And then the lion of the tribe of Judah is Christ. And then you got the beast. That's like a lion with wings, right? Let's take a look at that real quick. Now remember, in Daniel 7, well, and verse 3. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. All right. It was like a lion. Remember, it was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the earth as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. So, stands upon the earth, feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Is this reference to the lion, to Judah, of the Canaanite line? Possibly. That's kind of how I'm leaning toward. But what is this deal about eagle's wings? Well, let's take, take a look. All right, what about eagle's wings? Uh, let's see, let's go to Exodus, the book of Exodus. Remember now, Israel had been in Egypt and were slaves, and, um, and now they, the first Passover, Moses had led uh, Israel out of Egypt. Okay, Exodus 19, verse 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. What's the first three letters of Sinai? S-I-N, sin. S-I-N-A-I, -I, Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come 
to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel. Verse 4. Here is where it explains. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. Remember all the plagues of Egypt? Oh yeah. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings. And how I bear you on eagle wings and brought you unto myself. Did Israel get on this huge eagle and fly away? No, it's a figure of speech, people. You know, guy sees a good-looking girl and says, Wow, look at her. What a fox. You know, yeah, it's a figure of speech. All right. So, and how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. Ah, okay. So in Daniel 7, verse 4, the first was like a lion, the first of the four great beasts, right? And the four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. And it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. Why were the wings plucked? Um, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm guessing it has something to do with the, um, you know, Judah was the good seed and the Canaanites were the bad seed. The lion with the wings that was, you know, carried by the wings, but it was plucked up. I don't know. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. Let's go Revelation 12, verse 12. 12, 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And the woman, now I think this woman is Israel the church. People will argue with me. You know, there's, there's, you know, the Baptist churches will tell you that God has two brides. Well, yeah, he's got the church and then he's got the Jews and we're two different brides. God's a polygamist. You know, it's like, I, I can't, well, so not all of them teach that, but there are some that teach that. Uh, and it says, and the woman, not the women, and the woman, the church, Israel. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Ah. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Remember what we read in Exodus? Israel was... God, uh, the Lord said he brought, brought them out of Egypt on eagle's wings. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Uh, it's about three and a half years, people. And if you don't know who the dragon is or the serpent, it's... Uh, It's the devil. Verse 15. 
And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. Water. What was a water? Nations, people, languages, you know, yeah. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that, she might, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And if you don't know who the dragon and the serpent is, well, Revelation 12, 9 tells you. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So this last beast is going to be a dreadful beast. And uh, that iron, the teeth of iron... Well, traces back to Cain, Cain's lineage. Makes you wonder. All right, let's go back to Daniel 7. And verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancients of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Uh, read Revelation chapter 1. I believe this is Christ himself. I'm positive. I'm not, I think, I'm positive. It is. Verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain, and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. That ties right in with Revelation, doesn't it? The lake of fire. Oh, yeah. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. Verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man. What did Jesus call himself? The Son of Man. Came with the clouds of heaven. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Bible records in, uh, I think it's Acts chapter 3. My bad, Acts chapter 1. Let's read that real quick. Acts 1.1. 1, 1. The former treatise I have made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, taken up after that he through the holy ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of god and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem 
and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay. He was taken up in the cloud, out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men, angels, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? You know, what do you guys think you're doing? Just standing around looking up in the sky. Come on. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He went up in a cloud. He's going to return in a cloud. Now remember something. 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, dead, right? That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that's the gospel, people. Do you believe that Jesus died and rose again? I do. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Don't be surprised if the Antichrist fakes a second coming and tries to pretend that he's coming in the clouds. Big deal. Paul says... We have to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. If we don't meet the Lord in the air, in the clouds, when he's returning, it's the wrong Messiah. And besides, Matthew 24 tells you Christ said false Christ would come first. Somebody tell the pre-trib rapture Baptists because they don't get it. They're going to be fooled. They're already fooled. After all, they think the Antichrists are God's chosen people. Sad. Really sad. I went to one of their Bible colleges. I got a master's degree from one of their Bible colleges. Six years. Bible cemetery, as I call it. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Back to Daniel 7. Verse 13. I saw in the night visions, behold, one like the Son of Man come with the clouds of heaven and come to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, and all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. That's right. Christ's kingdom shall never be destroyed. And I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. 
I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and make me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast. The fourth beast, people. This is gonna. This is the revelation, tribulation, last kingdom devil beast. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others. It was different from all the others. Exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron. Cain, people. And his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake, very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Isn't that what we read in Revelation 12? Yes! I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Where's that? Uh, Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth angry and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with a remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of god and have the testimony of jesus christ the dragon doesn't care if you keep the commandments if you don't have the testimony of jesus and if you have the testimony of jesus but you're not you know letter of the spirit you know, you live like the rest of the world, you know, you cheat on your wife and steal and lie and murder, uh, you know, yeah, you know, keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Daniel 7.23, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms that shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry. Daniel 7.21, I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came. Christ. And judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints and the Most High. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. I believe that's going to be the Noahide laws. Where do the Noahide laws? Oh, well, those are the laws that were given by the Lord to Noah. Uh, Chaplain Bob, I, I, I've read the whole Bible. Uh, where's, where's the laws that were given to Noah? Wait a minute. I, I know the laws were given to, to, to Moses, but what, what laws were given to Noah? Uh, well... Those laws exist only in the minds of the rabbis. You see, Noah was never given any laws in my Bible. Those laws exist only in the minds of rabbis. The Noahide laws. Look it up. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. Noahide laws. And guess what? Christians are all guilty of law number one. And the penalty for violating law number one not to have any false gods, is uh, death. Method of execution, beheading. 
Oh, wait, I've read that somewhere. Beheading. Yeah, that's in the book of Revelation. That's what happens to uh, those that don't go along with worshiping the beast. Yeah, well, somebody tell the Baptist church because they haven't figured that one out. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given unto his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. That's about three and a half years, people. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cognations much troubled me, and my countenance changed to me, but I kept the matter in my heart. So there you go, people. Um... What was the lion, you know, the, the lion in Daniel that has the wings plucked, uh, you know, it's like a counterfeit Judah. Uh, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. I don't know. Maybe you got a better interpretation than me. I don't know. All I know is the last kingdom on this earth is going to be hell on earth. And... Um, All I know is Satan's kingdom is just about ready to be ha handed to him. The church has been uh, neglecting her duties so bad she deserves what's coming. I mean, it's pretty bad. The church tolerates any and all evil. The Lord said to put away evil. But uh, yeah, no, not the not not the end time church. She tolerates evil. So, what can I tell you? So I hope uh, you learned something, and uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus. Amen.